So is the iPad actually for creation and productivity, or is it just good for reading books and watching movies? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you seven key apps that set the iPad apart from every other Apple device and every other tablet that make it specifically useful for creation and productivity. Apps to edit video on iPad, creating podcasts strictly on the iPad, drawing, document editing, and a ton more. Rumors are that we're gonna get a suite of new iPads this year in 2024. There were actually no updates last year, but we'll see an OLED iPad Pro, refreshed iPad Air and maybe baseline iPad. And here's hoping the iPad mini gets some love too. First up is simply my favorite app for iPad and that's Ferrite. I use Ferrite to edit all of my podcasts right here on the iPad with the Apple Pencil. And for me, it's the fastest I can edit. I edit my new technology podcast, Primary Technology. Links down in the description, you can listen to that. I can even add chapters with custom chapter artwork in every episode, and it's easy to have templates that are ready to create a new episode right away. Here's my Primary Technology template with intro and outro music and even some sound effects already built in. I have every channel already configured with compressors and equalizers for each host, and I can add multiple tracks if we're gonna have guests and other people on the show. You can even record podcasts directly here in Ferrite. I can connect a USB-C microphone Phone here even to my iPad mini. This works with iPad Air and iPad Pro as well. You'll see the USB microphone is recognized there. And now I can record a podcast here. I actually have an entire video showing me editing a podcast live on the iPad so you can see actually how fast it is. And I have another video showing an in-depth tutorial on Ferrite. I'll put those links down in the video description. Number two, Pixelmator is an incredibly powerful app on the iPad. While it's also on the Mac and even the iPhone, I find using the Apple Pencil here on iPad really useful. Even if it's just for quick edits like creating custom episode artwork for a podcast, I can have a template here with one of my show art, bring in a photo for a new episode. I have easy access to layers on the left. I can drag them up and down. I can easily resize and reposition. And then I have so many tools up here like adding text, photos, new layers, effects, and shapes. Incredibly powerful to be able to edit this kind of stuff right here on the iPad. And what's even more powerful is because I use Pixelmator on my Mac as well, I have access to all of the same files here on my iPad. And if I wanna make a quick edit to a project I was working on the Mac right here on my iPad, I could just download it from the Files app in iCloud Drive. Here I have my 2023 Apple device tier list and I can edit this huge file right here on my iPad, save it, and then access it on my Mac later. All right, app number three is GoodNotes. Another app you can get on multiple platforms, but being on the iPad, specifically with the Apple Pencil, it makes GoodNotes incredibly useful here. For instance, when we were building this house in the studio I'm in right now, I had the floor plan here in GoodNotes actually on my iPad mini that's right here. And I would use it to draw things like where am I gonna place the access points for Wi-Fi, or make notes about where we need power outlets and having it on the small device like the iPad mini with Apple Pencil being able to annotate right here on the plans. Again, very powerful feature unique to the iPad. And GoodNotes is great at organizing your PDFs and being able to edit it, even exporting certain pages, and even do things like bring in a screenplay PDF, annotate on this, write on it, all these powerful features right here in GoodNotes on the iPad. Number four is Apple's own Final Cut Pro app for iPad. While it's not as full featured as Final Cut on the Mac, and those who usually edit on the Mac might find the iPad version a little limiting, it's great for on the go editing. I actually edited an entire video right here on the channel, I'll link it below, with Final Cut on iPad. If I'm out filming with my drone or I took some iPhone footage of my kids at a skate park and I just wanna edit it quickly, using Final Cut on the iPad is really convenient. And it does have some powerful features like multicam editing, being able to add that color grading and effects. And even more powerful features are gonna be coming soon like third-party plugins from Motion VFX. Pretty excited about that. And kind of two honorable mentions in this category is Logic Pro, Apple's other first-party app for iPad. I don't use Logic Pro personally on the iPad a lot, but I know my kids have used it and they've really enjoyed it. And I've heard from other people that Logic Pro is even more baked than Final Cut on the iPad. Really powerful application. I'll also mention LumaFusion. While I don't use it personally, it's the other de facto video editing app for iPad. Good friend Fernando Silva, he does videos for 9to5Mac. He edits all of his videos strictly on iPad in LumaFusion. It's pretty impressive. Number five is Lightroom on iPad. Again, you can get Lightroom on the Mac and even the iPhone, but having it on the iPad with Apple Pencil just makes it even more powerful. I've edited a lot of product photography right here in Lightroom, importing raw files from an SD card, using the USB-C port on the iPad, and being able to edit with the Apple Pencil right here on iPad, it's just super powerful. Here I'm even removing cracks from a tile that I used as the backdrop here, does a great job. Again, that interaction model with Apple Pencil and iPad, 
makes the difference in apps like Lightroom too. And while it works great on iPad mini, having the XDR screen on the iPad Pro, it's actually one of the best displays I have access to. I use a studio display with my Mac Studio, but that XDR screen is really top notch. So editing photos on an XDR iPad with Apple Pencil, doesn't get much better than that. Number six, if you're a musician or maybe vocalist or in a choir, the four score app for iPad is simply the best app for digital sheet music. I did a whole video really highlighting Fourscore and some of the incredible features like being able to blink at an iPad Pro and it will turn the page of the music you're reading with the blink of an eye or move of the mouth. Pretty wild. My wife actually uses Fourscore to practice for her orchestra playing and is probably gonna move to using the iPad specifically even in performances like in concerts. The iPad is also uniquely suited to this because you can annotate your music with the Apple Pencil and the iPad is gonna fit on a music stand way better than a MacBook. If you wanna see my video that covers Fourscore more in depth, check out the video above or down below. And number seven, what sets the iPad apart as a creation device is of course Procreate. Now I am not an artist, nor do I have any drawing skills whatsoever, but Procreate, I've seen some incredible artwork created here. I, I don't even know what I'm doing in this application, but I will link to some videos down below. But Procreate has some incredible examples just right here in the app showing what can be made with this application. And I've seen videos of just some wild stuff being created with Procreate on iPad and the Apple Pencil. Again, a very unique use case that only the iPad can deliver. So just those seven apps alone, I think set the iPad as a part as a creation and productivity device that no other Apple device can really do and no other tablet has the apps to do. Now I will give a couple honorable mentions to things like iMovie and GarageBand. These are Apple's more beginner and starter applications for video editing and music and audio creation, but they're still really powerful applications. I know my kids have used GarageBand a ton just making sounds and loops. So those are great applications as well. Also Apple's iWork Suite, which is available across their devices like Keynote, Pages, and Numbers, I actually find it be really useful on the iPad, especially Keynote. Lots of new features are being added to Keynote all the time. And even if you just need to make quick edits to slides or you even wanna present right from the iPad, using that USB-C port, connecting an HDMI monitor or USB-C monitor, using the iPad as a Keynote presentation device can be really powerful. And if you check out my video about seven iPhone apps I can't live without, I'll put that video above, all the apps that I mentioned in that video are actually available on the iPad as well. Anybox, Bear, Ferrite, all of these are cross-platform applications like Reader. Anybox where I save all my Read It Later links, videos, articles, those all get synced to the Anybox app right here on iPad as well. So if I wanna catch up on reading or watch some videos, they're all right here synced on the iPad. Same thing with Bear, any notes I've created on my Mac or iPhone, they're right here on my iPad, I can continue to edit and I have all those same powerful tools in Bear right here. Of course, if you're a Microsoft user, Office is right there on iPad. You can use the Word, Excel, and PowerPoint files. CapCut is one of the most downloaded video editors. It's actually number one in photo and video right now. I don't use CapCut personally, but overall, there are some unique apps to the iPad that set it apart as a creation and productivity device. And is it great for reading books and watching stuff too? Absolutely. That same XDR screen I was talking about on the iPad Pro it makes movies and TV shows look incredible. And reading books, you can't beat the iPad mini for thinness and lightness. Reading it outside, I do find it gets plenty bright enough in most conditions, maybe not the beach. And while the second generation Apple Pencil is a little long in the tooth, came out in 2018 over five years ago, that magnetic charging right there on the iPad is super convenient. I can move it between this and an iPad Pro just by tapping the pencil on that iPad. And if you were wondering, this Apple Pencil grip is from Paperlike. I'll put a link down in the description to this as well. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, rumor has it that there are new iPads coming out this year. Hopefully those OLED iPad Pros will come out. We should be seeing OLED iPad Pros, which will be an even better screen technology, should look amazing. An updated iPad Air, probably with an M3 chip, that will probably be the best iPad for most people, but you know, subscribe to the channel because I'll cover it all once it comes out. Updated base model iPads, and again, I'm really hoping for iPad mini. Primary technology, my tech podcast that comes out every week, I edit the entire show right here on iPad mini. Not even a big iPad. I do it right here with Ferrite and it's so seamless. I can edit anywhere in the house, on the patio. And this can be an incredibly powerful device for all those use cases that I mentioned. And so if you have an iPad app or use case you just find invaluable and you can't do on any other device, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Leave those apps and use cases down there. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button before you go. And if you wanna see my top seven iPhone apps that I just can't live without, I'll put that video right up here. And if you wanna see a video on the settings for your iPhone that really matter, I have 27 settings you should change right here. If you'd like me to do a video on that, but for iPad, let me know down in the comments as well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.